We're now honored to be joined by Knesset opposition leader Isaac Herzog, who will be helping us dive deeper into the recent meeting of Muslim leaders regarding the Temple Mount. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you. All right, so let's begin. Israel took down the security measures from the Temple Mount. They've all been removed, so why is this meeting taking place right now? Well, actually, I think that, uh, you know, there are the repercussions following the crisis. This was a major crisis. Temple Mount has always been a source of tension in the region. You know, it's, it's been almost 100 years where there were riots erupting, bloodshed pouring because of Temple Mount. I think that following the crisis, there's always the politics of it, mm -hmm. the religious politics of it. And I urge all the leaders in the region to be careful, to understand that anything to do with Temple Mount is very explosive. What we need to promote is calm on Temple Mount and around Temple Mount. And what was your reaction to the decision to remove these security barriers, the security cameras from the Temple Mount? First, let's understand the, all, the whole, uh, this chapter started by a vile terrorist attack of uh, three Israeli Arabs who killed two Israeli policemen on Temple Mount. So it was a horrendous attack, hyenas attack. And therefore, the police recommended to put the uh, magnanometers, the, these inspection tools on Temple Mount. Now, each and every one of the decisions made sense. Makes sense, logically, as part of security measures. You've got them all over the world in the most sensitive places. Would you, would you places. have recommended however, them? However, I think, and without you now delving into, uh, in hindsight, I said in the, in the Knesset plenary that uh, the tools themselves are not the cause and are not the objectives. What we need to get to is full, in-depth, intimate, strategic cooperation with Jordan. Unfortunately, there is a rift with Jordan, and we yes. need to do whatever we can to mend, to mend and amend this well, rift does, with His Majesty King Abdallah. What do you think needs to happen on Israel's part to mend this rift Look, with Jordan? For the last few years, and definitely for the last year, and definitely following the, re the agreement of the G six with Iran, and there was something that was clear that there's a new alternative coalition in the region. Mm -hmm. These are moderate Arab Sunni states who identify Iran as a threat and ISIL as a threat and therefore are willing to cooperate with Israel. In fact, if Israel would have pursued a major offensive on peace with the Palestinians, it would have been gone even further out, of the, out in the open. And therefore, this uh, event in Temple Mount actually created a setback, something which the terrorists wanted to achieve. And in order to show terrorism that it doesn't win, we need to reignite this coalition with the moderate Arab states and immediately. And we could do that. And there are a lot of issues at stake, and there is a common denominator of working together in a convergence of interests to get this coalition moving again. Now, I'd like to talk a little bit about, you know, kind of the impact that this crisis has had on the Palestinian Authority and Hamas. We're now hearing reports uh, that Hamas and the PA are attempting to reconcile. Is this the case? And if this is what is happening, what does that mean for Israel? Look, Palestinian politics is as complex as Israeli politics. And therefore, all these reports not necessarily reflect the true reality. I, for one, don't mind that there will be Palestinian rapport between all the, the, different, the different political parties in order to come to the peace table to un, unite it. But I don't believe it's feasible. Secondly, to, to Hamas promotes terror. Hamas celebrated the death of innocent people. Hamas is an enemy. But what I can say is that uh, what I hear are reports of, of a different kind, whereby there are discussions between the Egyptians and Hamas or no arrangements regarding the Rafah crossing. I mm -hmm. think that may be a very welcome change. Anything that can ease up the pressure on Gaza on the one hand, whilst making sure that there is no smuggling of arms and weapons or no rogue activity around those passages uh, that can be achieved is welcomed by me. What should Israel's reaction be, though, to, I mean, if there were to be a reconciliation, if this is what were to happen, what should Israel be doing? Well, first of all, Israel has to make sure that uh, any uh, steps of reconcil reconciliation of this nature is not at the expense of Israel, Nam namely that it makes made clear 
that there is no justification under any circumstances to tell. That's why I don't necessarily believe that the Palestinian security apparatus will be willing uh, to have rapport with Hamas so long as it promotes terror. On the other hand, there are a lot of politics, politics going on in well, light I of mean, the activity know, of, uh, Muhammad, uh, of Dakhlan mm -hmm. uh, yes. of, uh, from the Gulf vis-a-vis -vis Gaza, vis-a-vis -vis Egypt. And therefore, I would uh, urge to wait and see. I'm not sure that you will have a real rapport between Hamas and Fatah in the near future. What do you think is going to happen among the Palestinians now that there seems to, I guess what we're seeing is reports on their part that this is a kind of grassroots win, the fact that Israel took down these, you know, security barriers after having put them up, people protested, they were rioted, the Palestinians got what they wanted. What do you well, think? The, the, I think it's, it's not a positive outcome. I okay. think it may lead to the wrong conclusions. And I call upon the Palestinian people not to be misled or mistaken. There is only one choice, one strategic choice that both peoples need to take, and that is make peace with each other. It's feasible. Leaders have to be bold. Unfortunately, I said time and again, as leader of the opposition, that I don't see Abbas and Netanyahu being able to reach peace. I call upon the United States to continue its efforts to get to a deal between us and the Palestinians and not to give up and to be more forceful and to be more innovative in coming with new initiatives. We are all waiting well, we saw for the American... Well, we Kushner said today, or there was a leaked uh, report where he was essentially saying that he doesn't know what can be done. It seems like there's no way to solve this. Nothing has changed. You, in this report, you see signs of a certain despair mm -hmm. on, the beh on behalf of the U.S. administration, which is disturbing, which is bothering. Because the hope that was ignited in light of President Trump's visit to the region, as well as his meeting with all of the moderate Sunni leaders of the region in Riyadh, as well as his meetings with Netanyahu and Abbas, and speaking to the Israeli leadership, including me, I can say gave us huge hope. We thought that there will be a major American effort. Now, the Americans have, are investing a lot of time, and Jason Greenblatt, their emissary, is investing a lot of efforts. But unfortunately, it seems, again, as we know in the Middle East, that they're coming to a deadlock. And that requires boldness and courage not to be fearful. And I expect the American administration to come forward with a new initiative and bring the parties together to a room to try and bring some sort of a process, at least certain steps, not necessarily the final status agreement. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Opposition thank you. Leader Isaac Herzog. Thank you.